Welcome back to Casablanca. And this episode, I am covering Napoleon Dynamite. Very random, I know. I have had a few people, when I told people I was reviewing this, they're like, that's random. Yes, yes, I know. I randomly watched it a couple weeks ago. And while I'm watching it, I was like, you know what? I could do an episode on this. And then time got away from me. I have no concept of time at the moment. So I didn't realize it's... So I'm thinking I do an episode every two weeks. And so every Sunday I'm like, is it a podcast week? Nope, I did it last week. But then I was looking and I realized that my last episode was like a month ago. Actually, uh, I'm the guy that pulled up right here. My last episode was... Three weeks ago, I should have done an episode last week or the week before. Either way, I'm late. Um, I try to do this every other week. I should put it on my calendar. When I did, uh, when I was still doing Digressor, which I'm, it's still on hiatus. I have plans for it. It just hasn't happened yet. Um, I had that on my calendar every two weeks. So it was hard to miss that when it was literally reminding me on my calendar like hey it's time to post an episode and i would just have i would just do it and i don't do it with casablanca because i see it as a smaller ep- a smaller show but currently it's the main show so maybe i should actually put that on my calendar i um kind of an update uh show update on that by the way um i kind of got carried away when I decided to do seven episodes of Avonlea, uh, one for each season. So uh, you, you remember how I got through the first season on the episode, and I was like, actually, it's hard to talk about because I can't talk without giving spoilers, and yeah, well, I watch all of season two, and I'm like, well, crap, I don't know how to talk about season two. I watch season three, and I'm like, well, crap. So, um, I'm not going to do seven episodes on that. Uh, It'll be, uh, I went ahead and renamed the one episode I've already done to part one. And I'll just do the rest of the series as part two. Because, uh, yeah, I I got kind of excited about that. And then, um, without thinking it through ahead of time, I did the same thing on my blog years ago and Anne of I mean um Anne with an E came out I was trying to review it episode by episode but like by the end of the first season I was like I don't really have much to say about this and so like there was like a paragraph maybe if I was lucky and then halfway through season two I was like you know what screw it it was just too much to do I was trying to do episode by episode review and then what made it worse was there somebody tagged my blog like they were trying to talk about it and they're like oh yeah this blogger is actually reviewing it episode by episode and i got a lot of traffic and i'm like no stop please don't read it it's garbage and like and people were like oh you have you're so insightful like no i'm not <laughs> i'm not saying anything and so yeah instead of dealing with that again um I, i'm just gonna wait till I finish the whole series and do that. I'm probably not going to do a season by season on shows anymore. Lesson learned on that. Unless there's only one season, then yeah. (laughs) Anyway, I've been talking all this time and I haven't even gotten to the movie. Uh, I have notes. I, I always have notes. I've gotten shorter on my notes. I used to have detailed notes, and now it's just... I'm, I just show the microphone, my phone, as if as if you can see it. Anyway, it came out in 2004, Napoleon Dynamite did. It was directed by Jared Hess, and it was starring John Head, John Hedder. How do I... How am I... I I'm, I'm afraid to pronounce everyone else's name. Efren Ramirez, Tina Majerno, Magir- 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 I can't spoke, okay? And Hailey, 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 Hailey Duff, I cannot spoke tonight. 
the only person here who may have had some kind of fame before the movie was Duff because she's, I think, the older sister of Hilary Duff. I, that's just my thoughts. I didn't research that before. She's the one in the movie who played Summer. Uh, it was also inspired by a short film also directed by Jared Hess in 2002, also starring John H- Hader. Hader. I, I'm getting Bill Hader mixed up with John Hader. Okay? Uh, in 2002, that one cost $500 to make. It's It's like 10 minutes. I saw it years ago. It was black and white. And... Uh, John Hayter, uh, it's not called Napoleon Dynamite, His, the character is Seth, and it's a similar story set in the same town. Something I was surprised to find out is that Napoleon Dynamite is set in, it's set in Preston, Idaho, which unlike a lot of these movies set in small towns like You've got like like what's he think Gilbert Grape, which takes place in a fictional small town. This takes place in a small town that's real. It's set and and filmed in Preston, Idaho, and I don't know. I find that um I I think that's really cool. Uh, it inc- Preston High School is the actual high school, and um it was actually the home of Jared. Hess, so yeah, that was a cool fun fact. All oh, the places were real, but uh, all the um, they made the short film in two thousand two, and it cost five hundred dollars to make. Normally, I don't talk about budget and how much it made or anything, but I thought this was interesting. The original short film cost five hundred dollars to make. And the budget for the for Napoleon Dynamite was four hundred thousand. It and the box office was forty six point one million dollars. That is a, a massive uh, crap. My habit is saying flop. That's a massive flop. That's a massive unflop. That's a, a success. Success doesn't feel like. A, a big enough word for that. That is, that is massive. And so, obviously, with that being such a massive profit, the studio wanted a sequel, and they talked about making a sequel. And John Hader's even talked in the recent years that he wants a sequel, a kind of an update, like where where are they now type thing. But he wants it to be a darker story. Like you think that, you know, they've been successful in life, but he wants it to be they haven't been successful. And it's actually a dark story. And I think that's kind of interesting. The closest thing we've gotten to a sequel, it wasn't even a sequel. There was an animated series, I think in 2010. It's not a sequel because it's not a sequel. It's literally an like an animated adaptation of the movie, basically. I didn't watch it. I was just reading the, the thing, and it's like fans hated it because it was basically the same story. It's like give us more story <laughs> apparently like there was it like further the story like it just took place over the same time period there was like an additional character uh, additional characters and like more instances instis more story there is technically more story but it's in the same thing as the movie like they didn't further the story. That's basically what I meant. Something I like about this movie, it's, it's, uh, I don't know if it started the trend, but it's when I first noticed it is movies that don't really have a plot. And people get mad at me when I say that. They're like, hey, it has a plot. Vote for, vote for Pedro. Uh, that's, that happens in like the last half hour. Like the whole movie is basically just, 
here's a scene, stuff happened, here's a scene, stuff happened. It's just a movie of like a bunch of scenes of stuff happened, but they're not always connected. And that's not to criticize the movie. I mean, that's, it works. It works as, as a movie. And it's, it's like, it's kind of like the What You Didn't Get Were Great that I mentioned earlier. It also technically doesn't have a plot. Like, it starts off and here's, um, here's a conflict we have to resolve in the whole movie. Their, their goal is to set out to do this goal. And no, it's just, uh, What You Didn't Get Were Great is basically, here's a week in the life of this town. And Napoleon Dynamite is, here's a few days or a week in the life of this town. And there's nothing wrong with that. I like that. I'm, I'm glad not every single movie does that. Because that would get a little boring. I think another movie that does that, I think, like, um, because of Winn-Dixie, I think kind of is like that. There is a plot, you know, a beginning, a middle, and the reason I say that is because I've read the book, and while it is a good at uh, it's a good adaptation of the moments in the book, it's completely out of order, and yet it still works. It's like here's a week in the life of this town, and it works in whatever order you put it in, and so. Those stories can work. It doesn't have to have like a distinct plot. Like here's what's happened. You're just a major conflict throughout the movie. And not every conflict gets resolved technically. Because like there's that scene where Uncle Rico gives Deb the little brochure for the like the breast enhancement and says, Napoleon says you would like this. And she was like, Napoleon said that? And then she calls them all upset, like, "Hey, I don't, I know, I'm, I'm satisfied with my own body. You don't, I don't need your criticism or whatever she said." And well, technically, that gets resolved because she joins him to play tetherball at the end, but that's never addressed. Like, it's never, "Oh, I didn't say that." Uncle Rico decided to say that, and she's like, "I, I figured that you wouldn't say that." That never gets addressed. So she probably still thinks he said that. And so, like, even though there is some conflict in the movie, it's not all resolved. And it's, again, part of the week in the life of this town. Though I do kind of want a sequel. <laughs> I, I do want a sequel. And um, for the longest time, I didn't know there was a post credit scene. And it's a scene, usually, like, before the MCU, like, when there was a post credit scene, it was, like, a funny gag, like, like, just, like, something, like, a few seconds, like, maybe something happened in the, earlier in the movie, like, someone fell down a well, and then, but then, like, that character's forgotten about, and then at the post credit, it shows the well, hello? Anyone still there? Hello? And, <laughs> uh, yeah, that... That's what post credit scenes used to be. It's like a little funny gag. This was like a full five minute scene. And I never knew it was there until like a few years ago. Someone told me about the post credits. Like I saw a clip of Napoleon Dynamite riding a horse. I'm like, what is that from? Is that, they, they, are they making a sequel? And they're like, that's from the post credit scene. I'm like, Wait, what? What post credit scene? And then, uh, yeah, I looked it up and I was like, this was there the whole time. Because Marvel has now gotten us uh, to the point where we are expecting post credit scenes, even in movies that aren't Marvel. So, back then, I wasn't used to it. The first post credit scene I actually remember ever seeing was Space Jam. And I only knew it, I only knew it was there because, like, my mom and I saw it in theaters, and... We were what we were st we stayed during the credits because, like, I like the music they were playing because like it was, it was the credits on that are different because usually they like they'll play a song all the way through, and if the credits haven't finished they start a second song. This one, on um, Space Jam, it like cycles through a bunch of songs. It plays like thirty seconds of a song, 
and then it plays another song, 30 seconds of that song, it plays another song, and I, I wanted to stay and listen to the songs. I wanted to see, like, what, what songs are they going to play, and it gets to the end, and there's a little post credit scene. A gag. And I was like, hey, there's some extra at the end. And that's the first time I ever saw that in a movie, was in Space Jam. But yeah, like, um, I like... I was going to sound weird. The vibe of this movie. Like, the aesthetics, the atmosphere, like, the like the whole, the music, the soundtrack on this is really good. I like it. I don't know if I put it on my, my, my favorite soundtracks episode on Digressor. Because it, it always was one of my favorite soundtracks. But, like, I always, it's going to sound weird. I always forget about it, but I don't forget about it like I'm always listening to it but then I I'm also stalling while I scroll down to look at that playlist folder on Spotify wait top soundtracks songs nope it is not on there so apparently I forgot to add that but Rodavili is on there (laughs) anyway if you haven't seen Napoleon Dynamite in a while, I highly recommend watching it. I watched it on Max. That's that's where it's currently streaming. And according to Just Watch, that's the only place it's streaming. You could rent it pretty much everywhere you rent movies, but it's streaming on Max. So, yeah, that's where you watch that. Anyway, next episode is episode 30, which means it's in every 10th episode I do a double episode with two titles. And uh, you're just going to have to wait two weeks to find out what they are. Anyway, I'm going to end the episode here.